Hey there, friend, this is Gorgeous Internet. In today's episode, we're going to talk about Bitcoin and Tesla stock and what's going to happen this Friday. Is the Tesla stock going to tank or it's going to rise to new levels? I'm joking. We're not going to do that. We're going to start playing Cyberpunk 2077. So I'm super excited covering all the bugs and all the drama that's happening out there. We're not going to do that either. Damn it. We have to do coding and design. No. So in this episode, what we're going to talk about is how to create awesome website layouts. So if you're bored or you're not sure how to create nice layouts for your websites, or if you're used to just adding the text to the left and image to the right type of design, then we're going to change it up a bit. And we're going to talk about layout and composition. So you can create this because this is what we're going to be putting together today. Oh my God, this hair is getting super long. I'm not going to cut this off until I get the vaccine. How about that? Why did I buy this expensive camera when I'm using this cheap Fuji film? I'm not that smart, am I? Hit the thumbs up if you're smart. Now, before we talk about layout and composition, the first thing I really like to do before a design is to think of the idea. What am I going to build? So in this case, I'm going to build a health web app. Okay, so something to track our water intake, a place where we can do workouts in video form or something like that, and where we can find food recipes. So kind of like a diet fitness app. All right, so I have that idea. Now what I do is I think about the colors, I think about the fonts that I'm going to use and the images I'm going to use. All right, so I'm going to create my assets beforehand before I even start the design. So if you are interested in how to pick colors and how to pick typography, I did two episodes on my channel literally like a week or two ago. So check those out first. All right, so I'm going to literally find a font, find some colors, some images and get this going. Okay, so I picked out the font pop-ins for this one and I just added the text subheader logo and big header. I sized them appropriately the way I like it and I picked out a color for them. So the big header is a more intense dark and the logo is not that intense. Whatever, you get the point. For the color, since this is kind of a fitness app, I thought that green would be good because green represents, again, healthiness, plants and nature and all of that stuff. Uh, so I started with a green color. Now I picked out the secondary ones here to kind of use it as a filler in my design. Uh, so if I have some other items in there or something decorative, I picked out these two secondary colors. And the way I did this is I just used the analogous uh, color picking in Adobe Color. So I went here, I picked out the green or this one, this aqua color, and it gave me the bluish and the greenish. So I just picked out these two from here. Okay, you can go to analogous right here, and it's going to give you these two. So they go and flow nicely together. So now let's pick out some images. Okay, so I found a couple of things online and I put together kind of a card system here. So I have three cards here. So again, this app kind of has a a section. So I, I was thinking about having a couple of cards. So if the user wants to access workouts, there is a specific card for that. Uh, if they want a recipe, they can access that. Or if they have some saved saved foods or saved workouts, they can access it through this card. Again, I'm not really thinking about the layout, where I put things and how I adjust things. I just care about like the assets. So putting together things that can build out this website. All right. And I made sure that I found images that are quite okay. I found this big image here, which I'm going to use somehow. I'm not sure how yet. Uh, but again, try to take time finding images that are super nice uh, rather than just copy pasting something from the internet. Try to find something that's extremely related to your design. And sometimes the best way to do it is to actually make it your own because you're creating something very specific to your needs and things that you're going to find on the internet may not be that great for that. What I also did was I was planning on creating some kind of progress bar. So again, this is kind of a web app, which is going to show you like how many calories you ate that day, how much sleep you got that night and how much water intake you had. All right. So I found some logos, changed the colors with the secondary right here. And yeah, I think this is fine and good enough to get started. All right. So everything is jibber jabber here. So let's get into how to create a super nice layout for this. Okay. Let's talk about composition and layout. So Number one, it's going to be proximity. All proximity means is you take items that have some kind of relationship between them and you group them together. That's it. So in our case, the items that have relationship between them are the cards and the progress bars, right? And even this image 
somehow. We're kind of free to do whatever we want with this because this is kind of unique. We don't have multiple images of this sort. Uh, so what we do is we literally take the cards and we arrange them in a certain way. All right, but we want, what we want to make sure is that they have some kind of relationship and some kind of flow to them. All right, so even if I do this, this is still fine. You can feel free to do whatever you want with this as, as long as they have some kind of relationship between them, just like that. I'm gonna do it this way right here, like that. All right, and we can take the progress bar as well and I can make some kind of relationship between them either like this all right you can feel free to do i'm just gonna do it approximately like that all right so these are together they have some kind of relationship and these are together and they have some kind of relationship all right with this one i can experiment i can do whatever i want what i can do is just place it here for now and we are good Number two on the list is gonna be negative space. All negative space is, is literally just empty space between your items. And this kind of goes together with proximity as well, because using negative space can help your viewers identify groups of certain items and groups of certain relationships with items, right? So again, if you don't really have any space and everything is kind of jumbled up together, it's very hard to tell and read what's going on there. So separating them, it's very easy to read. So let's take a look here. So in our example here, we do have negative space between these items right here. However, there's more here, there's less here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of space them out equally. All right, just like that. Again, if we don't have any space going on here, uh, it kind of looks weird, right? They're all bunched together. So I'm going to separate these. And even this from this section, right? If I give it enough negative space, it's very easy to identify that this is kind of a separate section on our page. So I'm just going to bring this down and give it enough white space right there, just like that. Okay. Now I can take this as well and just move this over to kind of line this up with this space right here and move my image all the way in right here to match it up right there and again even here i mean i can experiment with this and move it to the center i can move it up that's perfectly fine as long as i have some decent negative space in here uh, to give this a bit of breathing room okay so something like that that's perfectly fine here we actually did a pretty good job of giving enough space between the icon here and the text and also the percentage sign here and the progress bar. And these are also spaced out equally. Again, if you have an item that's not spaced out equally, it can look kind of weird. And this can work in a way if, for example, this specific progress bar, this specific thing is different from these two, all right? So you could use negative space to separate maybe another progress bar here, all right? That has nothing to do with the, these two because adding more negative space here kind of destroys the relationship uh, between these three, right? So now only these two are in a relationship. Wow, so if you want to have a threesome, make sure you bring it down and you give it kind of the same amount of space. There we go. Now negative space can also be a bad thing. It can make your page look very empty. So in this case, yeah, this looks okay here. And this progress bar can look okay right here. However, there's this big empty space. So what a bunch of people do is they add like bullshit circles and stuff like, ooh, look how fancy my design is. Now <laughs> this can be fine, but the problem is, is that this really does not add anything to your page. All right, so don't just add random circles for no reason. If you add something to your design, either an image or a graph or something, uh, make sure that it has some kind of purpose. I guess it's okay to use this to kind of fill up the empty space, um, but don't just add random things like this. All right, like, whoa, we have a bunch of circles. So again, as you can see, this kind of destroys the negative space in your design because you clutter everything up and everything becomes harder to read. So as you can see, the more circles I add, the more difficult this looks to look at. You're not sure what exactly you're looking at. So in this case, I guess it would be fine to add a random big circle here. Probably a customized design would probably be better than a random circle. Um, but I just wanted to illustrate that 
negative sp uh, space like this can also mean a bad thing, right? It, your page can look very empty. So if we just have these things here, well, this kind of looks weird. There's so much empty space where we could add more information to this or something, right? So let's add this. And what I thought is that this section is going to be used for a progress bar. So this is kind of a sidebar. So what I can do is I can add like useless design or something here, but this rectangle now acts as a separator, kind of like a break between our main design and our progress bar. So it's fine to add lines and circles as long as they have some kind of purpose. All right. So if I add this like that, all right, this kind of indicates that we are breaking up this part of the section from this part. All right. So this has some kind of different meaning to it. And what I think is I just added kind of my profile here, something like that, and some text in here, just like that to fill this up. All right. So this is kind of a hint about your progress in that day. And here is just your profile. Number three, which I think is one of the most important ones is repetition. What does that mean? It means that we should repeat everything that we're doing on our page. So if we used a 18 pixel font size for our paragraph, well, make sure you use that everywhere in your website. If you have a header at a specific size and a specific color, make sure you keep repeating that and using that. Otherwise your layout will look very weird. My voice cracks. I'm a teenager for my design here. I did use repetition, but not in every situation. So I did use it on text. So if we take a look at this text, it's 24 pixels, regular pop-ins. I made sure to use it all across the board. These cards are also the same size with the same space. So that's repetition again here as well. All right. My big header, is a specific font. I keep using everything that I made here. I make sure not to create random fonts and random pixels. All right. So I'm just making sure I'm copying everything over from there. And that goes all around here and the spaces in between the text and everything of that sort also gets copied over. Now, one more important thing is the white space is also needs to be repeated for this design to be good. All right. So if I ever make a card system, another one, I want to make sure that the spacing in between these are the same. All right. So if we pick out like 50 here or something like that, 58 for this example, I want to make sure if I do another card system, I repeat the same spacing. There is one problem here. The spacing in between here and here is not the same. So we also want to repeat um, the negative space on our design on the outside right here. So the easiest way you can do that horizontally and vertically to match everything nicely up is to go here on desktop one and you can go here to layout grid hit plus. We can change this here to columns. I'm going to add 12 and the gutter is 50. All right. You can choose whatever you want here. Just make sure you repeat yourself and you're going to use the same one when you go vertically and horizontally. Okay. So now what I do is I match everything up to the grid. So there we go. I'm going to match it up here. This is my empty space. This is where the content starts. And I want to make sure I repeat myself all across the board. So I'll line everything up just like that. And I can also make the card sizes a specific size with a specific spacing. So now I know exactly that I'm going to use 50 pixels as my padding. So there we go. 50, 50, 50, and two lines are the sizes of the card. There we go. So now I can match everything up here as well. I can bring this over here, for example, just like that. The image can be brought here since this is my empty space, right? And I can repeat myself. Let's say I want to add this content to the center or something like that. And these as well. All right. So I just want to make sure I repeat myself. Now, let me actually make sure how much I have here. Okay. So, uh, on the second one. All right. So I want to make sure that this does not cross the second line. Same here, just like that. Line this up, bring this back. All right. So something like that. All right. Just keep a consistency to your design. Now we can do it vertically as well. So I'm just going to hide this and I'm going to add a new one. And here we're going to go to rows 12, 50. So I'm going to do the same thing just like that. 
and I can repeat myself. So I can align everything up um, horizontally. So again, I can leave the same amount of spacing if I want to. So something like that, I'm gonna start on the second red here, here as well in the middle, and here as well in the middle, just like that, and here as well. So maybe this right here, all right? And this has, maybe let's separate this here, bring this down. Maybe I want one empty space here. It's kind of up to you how you want to put this, but I, I'm just going to make sure I'm going to repeat everything I did here, here. And are we on number four? That's going to be contrast. So what contrast allows us to do is to take our viewers eyeballs and rip it out. The, I'm joking. We're not going to do that. Well, not in this episode is to take the viewers attention to a specific thing. So I'm going to illustrate this because it's easier. So here's a perfect example. If I have three circles right here, one, two, three, they're the same size. You don't know where to look at exactly because they're the same size, right? They're not different in any way. So what we can do is we can keep this this size, we can make this smaller and this one even smaller. So now our attention kind of goes to the big one first, right? Because this is this just kind of stands out, especially if we add a red color to it, right? That brings it out even more. And then these ones are not that important. All right, so we can use contrast to direct a viewer's attention to a specific part on our page. And this can actually apply to many things. If we take a look at photography and composition, that kind of does the same thing, right? We want to lead our viewers to a specific thing in our photography. So if we take a look at this grass, we just have grass everywhere. It's not that interesting at all. However, this image is actually really great because we have contrast. All right, we still have grass and everything, all the greenery here, but we have a nice contrast of colors here with reds and everything, and our eyes just go straight to the center here. We still know that there's grass, we know the context, we know it's an outdoor picnic, but it has some kind of interest to it. And I kind of already did that in this design right here. So as you can see, your eyes will lead to this part of the page first because we have a big, big image here with a very big and contrasty text. So this is the thing that I want my viewers to see. As soon as they come to my website, your eyes are probably gonna jump to this section of the image right here. All right, and then the less important ones are gonna have a grayer font, they're much smaller and it's just more subdued. And at the end, we get to this part. So if the reader still wants to read this part, they can, but this is the main focus. Now, let me show you how quickly we can change this. So this is not the main focus anymore. Just like that, I just made a big dark gray sort of, uh, rectangle here. Now, probably you're gonna take a look at this and be like, what the hell is going on here? As soon as you access this website, doesn't really matter if it looks ugly or whatever, but I made you jump with your eyes over here, first of all. Okay, so identify what's the most important part of your website. You can use size, you can use color, contrast, and all of those things to put the emphasis on it. And last but not least is to practice. I know that sounds cliche as hell, but it's the truth, man. So try to create as many designs as you can. Don't code them out, don't do anything. Well, if you're not a coder, it doesn't matter. Just open up Figma or Adobe XD and try to pump out as many designs as you can. If you have no ideas, copy. Just go on dribble.com, go to the website section, try to copy as many as you can because while you're copying, you learn good design patterns subconsciously. All right, so you're not even gonna realize, but you're gonna learn their system especially if you copy good designs. And that's gonna help a lot. All right, so that's gonna be it. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I don't know what's coming next. Um, Tesla stock, I hope I have Tesla stock and I hope it doesn't crash. But yeah, I'll see you next time. Peace.